Hi guys, if you're new here, I want to give you a warm welcome and if you've been here before, it's so good to have you back. Now today is a bit of a special video because the other day this channel turned one year old. So this is our one year anniversary. Therefore, I'm going to show you a very special trick. Now usually on this channel we do tricks from the Royal Road to Card Magic. It's a wonderful book that teaches all basics of card magic. But today I'm going to show you a bit of a different trick just to celebrate. I actually saved this trick for a later milestone like 5k or something but I think one year is also worth celebrating so I'm gonna show it to you today and this is a great one. The tricks we do usually from the Roro to Card Magic they are usually great tricks to you know fool your friends and family and entertain them but this trick is on another level in my opinion. This trick can go into any professional magician's repertoire and I know for a fact that it's in a lot of them. A lot of professionals do this trick because it's just so amazing and today you're going to learn it as well. So let me show the trick to you first and then I will tell you more about it including exactly how it's done. Let's get into it. Now people sometimes ask me how do I always find the cards I need? I always find exactly the cards I need exactly when I need them. Some people, for example, speculate that it has to do with the way I shuffle the cards. That these shuffles are not shuffles at all, but some kind of fake shuffles that doesn't really shuffle the decks. Of course, this is the kind of shuffles they use all over the world in different casinos for one very important reason, that they're impossible, of course, to cheat. So for those people who, even after I tell them that, are skeptical, I always do this kind of shuffle because this is my favorite shuffle. And why is that? Well, you can't dispute that the cards are actually genuinely being shuffled from top to bottom like this. Okay, so it doesn't have to do with the shuffles at all. It has to do with intuition. That's the truth and that's what I tell them. It has to do with intuition. If I just intuitively cut into the deck, I cut to an ace, the ace of diamonds. One card less or one card more and no ace. So let's try that again. I just intuitively cut to the ace of clubs. Again, one card less, one card more, no ace. Now the third ace, my intuition tells me it's going to be the ace of hearts and it's going to be on the exact exactly the 19th position. So let's see if I was right. So that's the ace of hearts. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 cards at exactly position number 19. Now at this point someone usually says like something in the lines of but okay you've done something to the cards right? So you always cut to the aces or the deck is full of aces or something like that. Now for those people, I spread the cards like this and I'm just going to pluck one card from the spread and it's the last ace, the ace of spades. <laughs> okay guys, I really hope you like this fantastic trick and I'm going to tell you more about it and we're going to learn it together right now. Okay guys, I really hope you like that trick. Now as I said in the beginning of this video we're celebrating one year. This channel is turning one year. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who subscribed to the channel, who are watching the videos, who are liking and an extra big thank you to everyone who is commenting down below and contributing to the community. I'm so grateful to all of you and I really hope you'll continue to support me and I'll do my best to give you some really nice card tricks and card Card slides going on. Also remember when we reach 3k which is going to be probably pretty soon I'm going to show you one more of these banger tricks in my opinion and also we're gonna have a, a nice giveaway. Okay guys enough talking and let's get into this trick. Now this is a trick by Ed Marlowe called Miracle Aces and it's a wonderful trick in my opinion and at the end of the trick I've combined another trick of uh, Roberto Giobbi 
it's called The Master Grip and it's in Card College Volume 3. I think it's in Volume 3. It's another really nice, you know, production and I think it works really great with this plot. Now, as you could see, this is a wonderful trick. It will fool like everyone. Everyone will think you're an absolute card genius. It's just so amazing. I remember the first time I saw this trick, I was blown away and I thought I will never be able to do that. But the great thing about this trick is that it's actually pretty easy, at least if you set it up before you do it. In the end of this video, I will tell you how to set up this trick as you, you know, as you're performing. But to begin with, let's just set it up manually before we start and then I'll explain the trick. And in the end, for those of you who are a little bit more advanced, I will tell you how to set it up. But of course you can set it up before you start the trick and it will get still get just as great reactions. So this is the setup. We're going to have the aces on the 17th, the 19th, the 21st and the 52nd place in the deck. Okay, at least this is how I do it. Some people have them on a little bit different locations, but this is how I like to do it. So let's just set that up together. So we're going to count down 16 cards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cards. Then an ace, then an indifferent card, then another ace on the 19th position, then an indifferent card and another ace. And this goes on top. And the last ace is going on the bottom, just like that. Okay, so that's the setup for this trick. Now from here, of course, you can do all kind of fancy false shuffles and cuts. There are videos on this channel about that. But the whole secret to this trick is estimation. And it might sound daunting, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. Okay, so you're just going to have to cut into you know, this setup here, basically. And that is about a third. That's what I can kind of think about it. It's about a third down. And you'll probably get it on the first try, right? And since there's only one card in between the aces, so if you would cut here, you know, all you have to do is pick up this card. And that's just as strong. So as you cut, and you aim for about a third, like that. If it's not here, it's going to be here, okay? So that's basically the whole secret. Cuts about a third. And you have to just experiment with this, try this a couple of times, and you will eventually be pretty good at it, you know? And you will hit almost every time, or every time actually. And if you don't, it's okay because you can just try again. That just gives the impression basically that, okay, he's actually cutting to exactly to the card. This is a hard thing to do. So if you cut a little bit too deep once and you don't find it there, you can just try again. And on the second try, you'll probably get it, okay? So that's more or less the whole secret. So we'll go through it. So you count about a third or so, let's see. And as I said, if it's not here, it's going to be here. So here we have the, the Ace of Diamonds, of course. And now you're going to reset this setup, you could say. You're going to take this card and place it on top, okay? And that will make it so there's still just one card in between the Aces, okay? So you go, okay, if I would cut one card less, or one card more, I wouldn't have cut to an ace. And you place this back first, and then the single card. From here, if you want to, you could do some kind of false cut or whatever, but I don't think it's necessary. I usually just go right again. Okay, so I just intuitively cut to the first ace, and again, if I just intuitively cut again, I cut to the second ace, the ace of clubs. Okay, now of course the setup here is a little bit uh, smaller, so there's a slightly bigger chance that you will miss it. But as I said, if you just play around with this, you will be surprised. I was a little bit afraid and skeptical in the beginning, but if you just do it a couple of times, you will be surprised how easy it is to cut basically at the exact same spot every time, or almost, with within one or two cards. And you also have this short-term muscle memories. If you hit it the first time, 
you're basically going to hit it most likely the second and the third time. So again, we cut to an ace, the ace of uh, clubs. And again, one card more or one card less. And you place this back first. You pick this up with your left hand and then you go with your right hand and return the single card. Now we know of course that the ace of spades is on the bottom. So we know that the last card is going to be the ace of hearts, right? And it's going to be because we've done this thing where we've returned the card as we need them, as we want them with that single card on top every time. We know that that card is on the 19th position. Now, if you're a little bit brave, you can go like, and again, you can fail once or maybe twice and it will still be pretty okay. So if you're feeling brave and if you practice this, you could probably go like, like I did, I think in the presentation. Uh, and the next card is going to be on the 19th position. Let's see if I was right. <laughs> in this case, I wasn't, but that's okay. You could go like, okay, just place it back. You go, this is very hard. This is very hard stuff, you know, cutting exactly 19th car 19 cards. And this time I hit it. But even if I, I didn't hit it and I did it again, I would probably be, be, you know, that's that's almost impossible. So what you can do then is, so instead I'm just gonna count them down or even better, you know, that's almost impossible. You probably think uh, I'm going to do something with the, with the card as I do it. So. Maybe you could just count down 19 cards, okay? So that's another way of doing it. But if you hit it on the first or the second try, that's of course the best, okay? Because you predicted now that you're going to find uh, the, the Ace of Hearts and you predicted that it's going to be on the 19th position. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 cards, okay? So that's a big wow moment. So now comes the end of the, the trick, the one I stole from Roberto Giobbi. And I think this is a very, very nice end of this trick. Make sure to get the card college books, by the way, because there are a lot of gold there and I'll do a review on them sometime. Anyways, their card is now on the bottom and here's what we're going to do. Or sorry, the last ace is on the bottom and here's what we're going to do. We're going to swing cut about half of the deck and we're going to just cut it, place this on top, but we're going to, to, to keep a break, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to collapse that break into a step like this. So now I collapse that step simply by more or less, you know, pressing inwards with my pinky finger, my left in, uh, pinky finger, and we have a step. So, what we're going to do from here is what's important as we spread the cards is that you keep pressure with your index finger, your right index finger, as you spread the cards in a gentle arc, just like this. You keep that pressure. From here I know, and I'm going to tell you how I know that, but I know that this is the Ace of Spades, okay? So I'm going to try to make that step in the spread a little bit larger, okay? So I make that step just so you can see. Right, so this here is the Ace of Spades. So if you look at all the cards here, you can say that there's a rectangle showing more or less of the backs of every card, except from this one. This is a triangle, just like so, okay? And the card after the triangle, to the right of the triangle, or above the triangle, however you want to see it, is going to be their card. Now usually, so this is the triangle card and the one above it is their card, <laughs> right? Now usually this trick is done with the card on the top, like so. And in that case, okay, now it's a bit, little bit covered, but you can see the triangle card, so to speak, is this one. So in that, that case, you're going to pick up the triangle card. But when it's on the bottom, it's going to be the one. And when we cut it like this, it's going to be the one after the triangle, okay? So this is the triangle card, so to speak, and this here is the Ace of Spades. And it's actually easier to see from my, my, my direction than from over there, which makes it really great. Okay, so what we're going to do, and this is going to take some practice, and I actually prefer, prefer doing this on a little bit of a bigger pad, because you can spread the cards more and get more of the backs exposed. So it's a little bit easier to pick that up. But what I do basically, is I'm going to turn over this ribbon spread like this 
and I use my index finger and let it ride on the spread. And when I reach that card after the triangle card, I'm going to pick that up with my thumb and my ring finger like this and just pluck it out of the spread. And we found the last ace. So that's going to take some practice, but not that much. So what's important to remember is to keep that pressure with your index finger as you spread the cards, okay? And again, you can see it clearly here. This is a triangle card, so to speak. If you look at all, all the other edges here, it's more of a square, except from over here. This here is a triangle, so that is the last ace, the ace of spades. Again, we ride on the spread, and when we get to that card, we pick it up with a thumb. Now I picked up two cards, but the thumb and the ring finger. And sometimes you will pick up two cards. And I just, if I do, I just drop that, the other card. It's impressive enough. People are always blown away by this. So that's how we find the last card. I hope you like that. Now, as I told you before, I'm going to show you how you can set this up on the go as you're performing. Okay, so we're going to do that with a spread call. Then we're going to add, um, we're going to add eight card on top of the aces as we've controlled them to the top. And then we're going to do a pharaoh shuffle. And that's basically it. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these moves because each of them requires like a 20 minute tutorial at least. So if you know these moves and you want to learn how to set this up, uh, this is for you. But I won't go through the details of every move. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now, so we're going to control the aces to the top with a spread call. Okay, so we find the first ace, we call it. And there goes the second ace. And we get to the third ace and the, th the fourth ace, okay? So now we control them to the top. And we want one of them, by the way, to the bottom. So you can get a break, however you want to do it. You can get a break under the top card, a thumb break, and then cut some, a couple of packets from the bottom. And we'll now control that to the top, uh, to the bottom, sorry. So now we have one ace on the bottom, we have three aces on the top. Now we're going to add eight cards on top. You could do that with an injog shuffle, for example, but it's a little bit tricky because you have to keep this on the bottom all the time. I usually do, you can also do it with the in the hands riffle shuffle. I usually do this entire trick on the table. So I just do it with a tabled riffle shuffle. So you begin by letting this card or some cards go and then you just set, I usually, I usually place four cards. I do two shuffles and I place four cards first. And then I do a second shuffle and I place, okay, now that was only three cards. Okay, but I place four cards on top, just like that, twice, usually, okay? So now we have four cards or eight cards, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And from here on, we're going to do a pharaoh shuffle. We're going to do an out pharaoh shuffle and you don't have to cut this perfectly. And I like to do the pharaoh shuffle from the top down, which helps in this case. So if you just uh, cut a little bit less like this, you'll make sure to keep this one on the bottom, which is important, of course. Then I simply do an out pharaoh, making sure that at least our top stock is interlaced perfectly, because that's that's what important, that it's one card in between each ace. Okay, an even easier way to do this actually would be to do what's known as a pharaoh slough off, slough off, something like that. Again, you cut a little bit less, about a third this time, and you just uh, pharaoh this into the other pile. And as I said, I like to do from the bottom down, like so. And now what you do is you're going to pull out all these interlaced cards and let the other cards fall onto your left hand and just place this telescoped configuration, whoops, basically on top, like so. And you can do this flourish here. And that accomplishes the same thing, actually. That's the equivalent, more or less, in this case, of an out pharaoh. So now we're in that. Now, now we've set up the deck. Okay, so that's how we set up the deck. As I said, if you know these moves, you can do this on the fly. If you don't, you can just set it up before. No matter what, you're going to get great reactions. So I really hope you like this trick. And thank you again so much for subscribing this year. 
and let's have a really nice second year of the channel as well. I'm so grateful to all of you. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't and see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.